Hey Experience family, it's Pastor Milton. And uh, pretty soon we're gonna be jumping into the Word of God. But before we do that, we wanted to have a time of prayer. And I think today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Usually I give you something specific to pray for. And since Thanksgiving uh, has just passed a couple of days ago, I don't think we should give up that idea of giving thanks. So today we want to have prayers of thanksgiving as, as our prayer time. So what are you thankful for, especially when it comes to God and what God has been doing in your life? So uh, think about that for a few minutes. Get with your family if you're online or if you're in the building, uh, go ahead and get with the person that's closest to you and share with them some of the things that you're grateful for and then take a time of prayer thanking God for those things and thanking him for what he's going to do in the future as we're looking towards a new year. So go ahead and get with the people around you. Let's have a time of prayer. And in a few short minutes, we're going to jump back into the word of God.
Hello, Experience Church and family. Welcome to the Experience Church. I'm Milton Marquez, the pastor here, and I just want to thank you and let you know that we're honored that you chose to worship with us today. And um, we know you have lots of places to worship today, and and uh, it's awesome that you chose to be with us. And we're just praying that today's message will be uh, great for you, will be a blessing for you and for your family. Um, now, normally, we would be uh, <clears throat> uh, in our church building and um, and online at the same time. And unfortunately, today, we're not going to be able to do that. And 2020 has been a crazy year. As you know, I don't have to tell you. But unfortunately, one of our technicians from, from our tech team it was uh, visiting family for Thanksgiving break. And another one due to COVID related issues is not able to be in the building, which means that we didn't have anyone today to run the live stream. So those of you who are online while you're hearing this message, those who are in the building are hearing the same message live. And uh, unfortunately, we can't do both things together. And we usually love to do it that way because we connect and we use the, the technology to text each other and to, to uh, comment back and forth about uh, the Word of God that's being presented that day. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that, which, which in a way is, is an interesting uh, positive development because it shows that our online ministry is growing and we want to continue to grow it. And as ministries grow, it means we need more people. So if you're one of those people who might be interested in being a part of our online ministries, let us know because we'd love to get you involved in the team, get you trained up, and uh, we can have less and less of these interruptions because we have more people available. So if you're interested, go ahead and email us at support at livetheexperience.org and let us know, hey, I want to get involved. Let me know how I can get started and someone will contact you and get you going. Uh, today, we are going to continue our series called Now What? And basically, because of everything that we've experienced uh, during 2020, it, it, it causes us to look at things and to reflect and to ask the question, as God's people, what are we going to do now? And last week, we talked about uh, going through this election season. And uh, if, you, if you're interested in knowing uh, how we as Christians uh, can be, uh, can get, get moving after the election and what we should be doing and how we should be acting, go ahead and jump uh, on, on the different ways that you can connect with us on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, on YouTube, and of course at livetheexperience.org. And last week's sermon is there and all our other series are available to you so you can get caught up. But today we're not going to talk about the election. Today we're going to talk about a less controversial issue, the pandemic. <laughs> and uh, I know some of you are, are maybe are tired of this, but it's important for us after having gone through this pandemic and still, still going through it, we ask the question, what do we do now? Now what do we do as God's people? And we've, we've experienced such changes in our lives since this pandemic has hit us. And, uh, and I was going on the CDC website um, because I wanted to understand where we are with, with the pandemic. Because, you know, early on, so many of us, we didn't know what was going on. We, and so much misinformation came about because we were learning so much about this disease. And, and here's the latest information that I was able to get from the CDC website. And uh, so far in the United States, According to the CDC, we've had 252,673 deaths related to COVID. The greatest number, uh, uh, we'll do some demographics here, the greatest number who have, who have perished are, are whites. 56.8% of the deaths have been white people. Uh, for those uh, in the age group, the greatest number have been those of over 85 years old. That's 32.3%. And according to gender, uh, the greatest number have been males at 53.8 percent. Now, the Experience Church, we're we're here in Idaho, so so let's look at the Idaho numbers just as a comparison. In Idaho, we've had 895 deaths. Uh, of those deaths, the group majority have been uh, nine uh, whites, 94.47 percent, 
and uh, of age group, it's been those over 80, 53.4%. And of, uh, uh, of gender, it's been males at 65.2%. And, and, and this virus took many of us by surprise. And, and if you remember in the early days, um, we weren't even sure how to, how to care for ourselves, how to prevent uh, getting the disease. If we got sick, we weren't even sure what to do. Uh, so uh, we're learning more and more, praise the Lord. And, and I went on the CDC website to just kind of understand oh, how do we function with this disease? Uh, so here are the symptoms that, that they tell us we should be paying attention to. And these symptoms appear uh, between 2 and 14 days of being exposed to the virus. Uh, you have fevers or chills. You have a cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, a uh, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. So these are the symptoms you should be looking for. And then, of course, the question is, well, if I have some of these symptoms, when should I be seeking emergency medical attention? And the CDC does tell us, uh, here are the things you should be looking for. And, and, and if these happen, get emergency medical attention because it's important that we keep the, the emergency rooms uh, free for the really serious cases. But here's when you should go. If you have trouble breathing, you have persistent pain or pressure in your chest, you have new confusion, you have an inability to wake or stay awake, or you have bluish lips or a face. So, you know, if you have those things, head over to the ER. Now, how do you protect yourself? If you don't have the disease, how do you make sure that you, you're safe and you don't get it if possible? Uh, here's what the CDC recommends. Wash your hands often. Avoid close contact with people. Cover your mouth and nose with a mask around others. Cover your coughs and sneezes. Clean and disinfect and monitor your health daily. Very good. Now, uh, there is a COVID test. I've had it and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but who should get tested? Is it even necessary for you to get tested? Uh, and here are the three things that they say. People who have the symptoms of COVID-19 should get tested. People who have, a, who have had close contact. And what that means is you've been within six feet for a total of 15 minutes or more with someone with a confirmed COVID-19 case. And of course, if you've been asked or referred to get tested by your healthcare provider, local or state health department. So this is who should get tested. Now, what do you do if you do get COVID? How should you deal with it? How should you protect yourself and how should you protect others? Uh, here's what the CDC recommends. Stay home, uh, except to get medical care. Separate yourself from other people. Call ahead before visiting your doctor. Let them know that you have it. Wear a mask around other people. Co cover your coughs and sneezes. Clean your hands often. Avoid sharing personal household items and clean all high touch surfaces every day. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You didn't, you didn't tune in today. You didn't come online to uh, get a COVID uh, class. Okay, and I, and I get that. But, but what this information shows us is, is that we have a disease that's affecting our lives in so many ways. And, 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 and it's gotten us out of our normal routine. It's gotten us out of what we're used to. And, and it's become a nuisance. And, and, and I want to let you know that as God's people, we have to figure out what's next for us. What happens now? And, and in light of the pandemic, and all that it's done to our society, we have to understand what our role is as Christians. Because this pandemic is, has become more than just something about our physical health. It's gone much deeper than that. Uh, Mental Health America uh, has online screening tools that they use to help people determine whether they're dealing with anxiety or depression. And here is what their screenings have shown. And these are only the stats up until May. So we're gonna get the, the rest of these stats for the rest of the year. But here's what they told us, that the per day number of anxiety screenings completed in May was 370% higher than in January before the coronavirus stress began. And the per day number of depression screens was 394% higher in May than in January. This is important because see, we're seeing now that this coronavirus 
has gone beyond a physical issue. It's hurting us spiritually and emotionally. And to that level, it has affected us. So we as Christians, we can't take this lightly. I remember, for me personally, that I entered 2020 with a passion and a fire to lead our church into the next future that God had for us. I was excited. I was ready. And then the pandemic came and it just stomped those dreams into the dirt. And I felt like I was stomped with them. And there were moments being in my house, not having, being able to do church. There were moments that I just felt like I was useless. I felt like, like maybe this was the end, like it wasn't going to happen. And it took a lot of prayer. It took a lot of reflection. It took a lot of leaning on friends and family and having lots of conversations with, with my daughters and, and with my wife. And going through the pain with them to get to the point where I, instead of seeing what opportunities I had lost and what wasn't going to happen, to be able to see what future God was putting together for us and what was going to happen. And if I felt that way, I know that many of you felt something similar. But today we're going to look at a story in the Bible that's going to give us some things to think about in relationship to this pandemic issue that we're going through. It's found in Luke 17. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Luke 17. In this story, Jesus is going to encounter 10 men with leprosy. Now, leprosy was a disease, a very contagious skin disease that was that was affecting the, the society at that time. And and it went as far back as Moses, if you remember. And, and here's how it was dealt with in the time of Moses. Uh, you can find that in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 13. And we're going to read a couple of verses, starting in verse 45. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as the serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. This was a terrible disease that caused separation of those who were sick. They had to live outside. And I was reading online uh, different studies about leprosy in ancient times and, and even leprosy today. And I came across a, a Dr. Alan Gillen, and here's what he says about leprosy. Leprosy is spread by multiple skin contacts as well as by droplets from the upper respiratory tracts such as nasal secretions that are transmitted from person to person. Does any of this sound familiar? Isolation, avoiding contact with others, contagious through droplets and contact. But if being getting sick wasn't bad enough, probably the worst part of the disease was the attitude that the healthy people had about those with leprosy. And not just those with leprosy, those with any kind of disease, really. Uh, if, they, if they were a lame or if they were crippled or, or if they had some kind of other ailment. Most people in, in, in the time of Jesus believed that if you were a sick person, it was because you were a sinner. It was because you had done something to deserve the sickness that God had placed upon you. You were being punished. And, and, and one, one thing we have to be careful as God's people is to not create an atmosphere of shame connected to sickness. See, the reason shame is so devastating, it's because shame separates people. And this disease has already separated us to a level that we've never seen before. And it would be a tragedy for us as Christians to put on top of the isolation that already exists, the shame that will create spiritual and emotional isolation. And I'll, I'll admit that this has been a hard thing for me uh, because, because when I hear about someone close to me that, that has been exposed to COVID or has a confirmed case of COVID, the first thought that comes into my mind is how this is gonna affect me. How I'm not gonna be able to either go into the work 
or I'm not going to be able to do the things that I wanted to do, or I'm not going to be able to hang out with the people I wanted to hang out, and I'm not going to be able, and I'm not going to be able, and I'm not going to be able, and it becomes about how this is affecting me, and I forget about the person who is sick. And I don't know if you've, you've been feeling this at all. And, and, and you're gonna, we're going to need to take a different tact and a different approach when it comes to people who are sick with this disease. We're going to have to take a position of sympathy, of love, and of care. And this is important because here's what you need to understand. You are not immune. You're not immune. Yes, you might, not, you might be healthy today, but you might not be healthy tomorrow. You might not have COVID today, but you could get it tomorrow. And it's and whether you wear a mask or not, sometimes you're going to be exposed to something. And if it's not COVID, it's going to be something else. And if it's not something else, it could be something even worse. I remember a, a friend and mentor of mine, I pastored with him for almost 13 years. And that friend of mine one day came to us as pastors and he told us he had been diagnosed with cancer. And that was tough for us as a church because our previous senior pastor had, had passed away and, uh, because of cancer. And he shared the journey with us and he let us know that it was, it was something that God was working in his heart about. And, and he was praying a lot to God about his health and about, of course, his soul and, and his future. And I'll never forget what he told me one day. He said, and he told all of us, he said, that God had revealed to him that we are all terminal. What, what he was saying is that if COVID doesn't get you, something else is going to get you. Because if Jesus doesn't come soon, we're all going to perish. And either from sickness, either from an accident, either from time, and, and we're all on this trajectory to go down into the grave. So we have to take a position of sympathy, of love, and of care for those who are sick. Because the day is going to come when we are going to need that love, that care, that sympathy. So here's how the story begins in Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 12. And he, Jesus, was going into a village... Ten men with leprosy came toward him. They stood at a distance and shouted, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Isn't that an interesting request by these men? Have pity on us. Other translations say, have mercy on us. They were basically saying to Jesus, don't overlook us, don't forget us. And here is what we have to understand in regards to this pandemic. People need our understanding. They need our care. They need our sympathy. Those of us who are healthy, we can't forget about the sick. We can't look at them as a nuisance or, or they, they're getting in the way of our plans and, and what we want to do. A couple of weeks ago, I learned that I had been exposed to someone with a confirmed case of COVID and I started not feeling well. So I went to the, to the uh, uh, urgent care and they stuck a long Q-tip up my nose, and it was not enjoyable. And uh, I went home and quarantined. Uh, my my wife, because she works in the health, um, she's a healthcare provider. She uh, couldn't take or couldn't risk being exposed to me and not being able to care for her patients. So I had to go into the guest room until the results of the test were confirmed. And I thought, oh, no big deal. I'll take, I'll take my Bible, I'll take my books, I'll take my computer, I'll take my iPad. I can read, I can watch movies, I can sleep. And I thought it would be great. I could just wait. But the isolation started weighing down on me. Being alone, not be, having the freedom to move about, and if it wasn't for my wife and my daughter who were there to come and just check on me, hey, how you doing? Come bring me water, come bring me food, come bring me fresh clothes, 
come bring me the things that I needed that I didn't even realize I didn't have until I was stuck in, in, uh, <clears throat> in that room. All of that, they took care of me. And if it wasn't for their care, for their attention, for their sympathy, I wouldn't have made it. Emotionally, I wouldn't have made it. And I know that I got through that because of them. We need to take those moments and look and connect with people who are sick. We still have to do it safely. We still have to follow the guidelines. We still have to be smart. But people who are sick need us not to forget about them, not to uh, uh, see them as a nuisance, but to see them as people who need us. Because remember, the day is coming when you're going to need someone as well. Well, the story continues in verse 14. Jesus looked at them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. On their way, they were healed. I just want you to understand, if you are dealing with this sickness, if you are dealing right now, you're at home, you're not feeling well, just know that healing is coming. Jesus doesn't want you to be sick. Jesus doesn't want you to feel bad. Jesus doesn't want you in your, in your bed, snuggled up, coughing, and, and not knowing if you're going to get any better. Jesus wants you to be healed. And Jesus didn't create this virus to punish us. Jesus didn't, isn't judging us through this virus. This virus exists because we live in a sinful world where a virus can grow and hurt us. But know that you can be healed and healing is coming. The problem is that I don't know in what form the healing is coming. Those of us who are sick want to be better. And we want to be better now. But that's not the way it works sometimes. In our family, we had uh, a family member pass due to complications related to COVID. And I remember when the news got to us, it, it came to us through Facebook as a family member posted and let us know what was happening. And I remember typing into Facebook that uh, I was praying and that um, I knew that God could heal. And it's interesting, one of my daughters saw that I had, that I had typed that um, and was very frank with me saying, Dad, um, do you feel uncomfortable do you feel any doubt in saying that? And I thought about it for a second and I said, no, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that God can heal because I truly believe that. Now, what I don't know is if God will heal in that specific way. And my prayer on top of the healing of this family member, my prayer on top of that was that God would heal the family in some way, that he would penetrate them with his presence. And I see glimpses in the other Facebook posts that have come since the passing of our family member that God is doing that and that he is coming through. So I believe God can heal, but I don't know in what form God will heal. But just know that if you're sick, healing is coming in some way. God will come through. The story continues in verses 15 and 16. Uh, because uh, those men were healed. And here's what verse 15 says. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. There has to be a reaction to healing. And for the Christian, the reaction is to praise God. Now, some people praise medicine. Some people praise the medical professional when they're healed. And, and that's appropriate. Those things exist and, and they work. But we as Christians have to understand that everything good that comes to us comes from God. And the healing that comes, comes because God made it possible after I uh, came out of the quarantine in the, in the guest room, after the test came back negative, that I did not have COVID, 
I came out. Ah, oh, and I felt such a freedom. I felt such a freedom that I could move about my house again, that I could sit in my couch and hang out with my family and watch TV, that I could open the refrigerator and pull out anything I wanted to eat, that I no longer had to rely on, on people to get me the things that I needed, that I could get them myself, that I could take a shower and that kind of put on fresh clothes. And I praised God for all those things. I praised Him. Because God deserves the praise when healing comes. And if people don't praise God when they're healed, we can praise God for them and let them know, hey, I'm praising God for your health. I'm praising God for your healing. I'm praising God for what He's done in your life. And it's interesting that when that guy came back to praise God, to praise Jesus for what had happened, Jesus noticed that, hey, there were 10 of you, and now there's only one of you. Where are the other nine? And the guy didn't know. And Jesus recognized this man, and he said, hey, you're a Samaritan. And you came back. And it's interesting that this one detail is written, and, and some scholars believe that the other nine were probably Jewish. And when they received their healing, they probably felt that they deserved to be healed. And this one Samaritan man, who probably didn't think he deserved to be healed, he knew that he had to come back and praise God. I don't deserve this, but you gave it to me. Thank you. And this is what Jesus told this man. He, he told him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. Here is the key to the what now question. This is it right here. Jesus said, Jesus said, go. Get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. The solution to the pandemic is faith. Let me say that again. The solution to the pandemic is faith. What do I mean by this? L let's go back a few verses so we understand the context here. Jesus said in verse 14, Go, show yourselves to the priests. On their way, they were healed. Jesus forced these men into a faith move. You see, they couldn't go to the priest until they were healed. They weren't allowed. They weren't even allowed into the town with leprosy. But Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priest. When he said that, they were still sick. They still had leprosy. But it was their move of faith. It was their move of faith that allowed them to be healed. We have to live a life of faith. That faith will bring salvation and healing. It's faith. Faith that God is going to take care of us. Faith that if we're sick, God is going to heal us. Faith that God will get the solution to the pandemic and He will make it happen. Faith that God is going to be there for us no matter what happens. Faith that we're not going to be isolated from each other forever. It's faith that's going to get us through the pandemic. The now what answer is live a life of faith. See, if you live your life of faith, you will inspire others to exercise their faith, to believe in God, to believe that there is going to be an end to this pandemic. The now what question, now what with the pandemic, is live a life of faith. And when we live a life of faith, we bring healing to our family. We bring healing to our friends. We bring healing to our communities. And we bring healing to the world. What Jesus told those 10 lepers is what Jesus is telling us today. Get up. On your way, your faith has healed and saved you. Father God, may we today live 
lives of faith. That is the answer to the now what question. Our faith will save and heal us during this time of pandemic. Lord, help us to learn how to do that, to exercise our faith each and every day, to help others to build their faith in you, knowing that you are going to get us through it. Thank you, Lord. And may we live this life of faith forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for being with us here at the Experience Church. Uh, we will be back next week, and we will be going live, hopefully with our live stream, assuming everything goes okay. Um, now, many of you uh, have heard some of our announcements. We want to just remind you quickly, we are sponsoring a family for our uh, Christmas uh, celebrations, and we want to uh, just shower them with gifts and with love. So if you're interested in finding out more about how to get involved, go ahead and go on to livetheexperience.org and you'll find all the information there on how to sign up to give a gift. Also, we've partnered with the Crosswalk Church for our children's ministries. And if you haven't ordered your kit yet, some families have already texted me letting me know that they've received their kit. But if you want a kit for your family, Make sure to go on livetheexperience.org, go to the ministry section, and there you'll find all the information on how to be a part of the Children's Ministries program. And of course, if you want to continue to support the, uh, the online ministries and all the other ministries of the, uh, the Experience Church, if you, want to, if you need a place to give your tithes and offerings, you can, all, you can find it all on our website, livetheexperience.org. And all the information is there for you to give your tithes and offerings. And we want to thank everyone who's given so faithfully this year. We haven't seen a drop in our giving at all. And we're just praising God for your generosity and for your uh, faithfulness. So God bless you. We'll see you next week. And we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye.